Hey guys, welcome back to Doing It DIY. If you're new here, welcome. My name's Allison. I can't wait for us to DIY together. Today I have four super easy spring and Easter Dollar Tree and Dollar General DIYs that I think you're going to like. Everything you need to complete these DIYs is in the description box below. Let's go ahead and get into project number one, this super cute knockoff of a Kirkland's bunny. This is everything you need on the screen. The bunny that was my inspiration, I'm gonna put right here. I'm just gonna let you guys know very quickly while you're watching what I'm doing that I have a new camera set up, so everything is a little bit wonky this week. <laughs> it was really, really apparent when I was doing the editing and I couldn't go back and fix it at that point. So just bear with me on the, the video. It's a little bit messed up this week, but at least now I know what to do for next week. So we're just going to go ahead and take this wooden dollar store, dollar general bunny. I think it was $2 and remove the tags. And then I'm going to mix up some brown oxide and jet black from apple barrel with a little bit of water and make some DIY stain. If you guys have been around my channel at any time at all, you know, this is my old tried and true DIY stain. I love it. It works every time and it's beautiful. We're just going to stain the front and back of the bunny and then this is just a rectangular piece of wood that I found in the craft section at the Family Dollar. And then we're just gonna wipe them down, easy peasy. Then I'm gonna take some Apple Barrel white paint and I'm going to use one of the smaller wooden dowels from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna put dip the end of that into the white paint and then we're just gonna put polka dots all over our bunny because that's what the Kirkland's version looked like. And I did mine for $3. I think the Kirkland's bunny was like $13 or $14. Mine was only three. I'm sure you could make it even cheaper if you had some of the supplies on hand. That's just what mine cost. It was super easy. And then I have one of these wooden gift tags. I told you guys about those so many videos back. I don't even remember which one it was. If I remember, I'll link it up here above. But it's just a wooden gift tag that's it. And I just painted that with a little bit of white paint from Apple Barrel. Then I'm just going to take a white pom-pom and some hot glue and hot glue that right at the end to make a little tail. Then I'm just going to take some natural colored jute twine and tie a very simple little bow right around the little bunny's neck. And then I am going to take this little piece of, I must say canvas, <laughs> piece of vinyl that I cut out with my Cricut. If you want to use the same one I did, I link that SVG below. And I'm going to put that on to our little tag and attach the tag to our little bow around his neck. You can also just freehand hoppity or hop or whatever you'd like to do. Now I'm just gonna take a little bit of hot glue and I'm gonna glue my bunny to that base and use a little piece of tumbling tower block to make sure it doesn't fall over and that's it. This one was so simple, I love it so much and it looks just like the Kirkland's version. Okay, project number two. We have this super easy little directional Easter sign. I used, I, I did the sign very, very closely to the original but then I just added my spin on it. This was a little too much color going on for me a little bit, I just didn't like it. So it also was glittery and I hate glitter so. I just took this sign, this again is from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna remove the Easter eggs and the bunny. We're gonna put those back on. You can paint those if you want. I chose to leave them just how they were because there's not a lot of color going on in my sign. Do whatever you want. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take some Apple Barrel Cobalt Blue and some Apple Barrel White. Mix those together. I'm looking for like almost a Robin Egg Blue, and the colors I mixed before that were a little bit more on the green side, so I wanted to fix that. And then I'm just going to take some uh, Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory and I'm going to use my ruler and instead of drawing with a pencil to separate each one of these little arrows, I'm just going to take my paintbrush and line up my ruler and just go straight across the ruler to make the line. That way I don't have to try to then cover up a pencil mark, which is kind of hard to do on a light color. And once we have done that, then we're gonna take that same ivory paint and we are going to go around and outline the entire sign in white or ivory. Very easy. Just a very thin little line all around the outside edge. 
And at this point, I decided that I wanted to do a little bit of distressing. So I'm going to use a Waverly chalk paint and Elephant and Waverly chalk paint and Ivory and just a very dry brush and very light hand go back and forth all over the entire piece and give it just a little bit of distressing. I'm not even sure that you're going to be able to see the distressing. That's how light I did this. Usually I go overboard and have to go back and tone it down. This time I stayed very, very light. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my little, my little sign. What are they? I, I'm thinking like road signs, like these are roads. So I put bunny trail and cotton tail lane and jelly bean way. And the SVG that I created for these is also linked below. You can of course print these out on your printer and then just use the, the method where you turn the printed paper over and scribble all over it with a pencil and then write, write, you know, trace over it directly onto the, the um, piece that you're working on and then freehand paint it or not freehand paint it. But you know, you, I know you guys know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. It sounds like, but I know you guys know I did leave the fonts below. So if you wanted to replicate it and you don't have a Cricut, you could just do that on a printer. And then once I have those on there, I am just going to go ahead and connect the bunny and the two Easter eggs, just wherever you want. You can leave these off. You can paint them a different color. Like I said before, I thought that mine needed to stay these colors or very similar colors just because there wasn't a whole lot of color going on in my sign. And I do like the way that it turned out. So I was really happy that I decided not to paint those, but you can do whatever you want here. You can be as creative as you want. Totally up to you. And then I'm just going to take my little skewer and poke through those original hanging signs because they did get a little bit clopped up with paint. And then I'm just going to take some ribbon. This came from the Easter section at Walmart and I'm going to poke that through the holes. I always use a skewer to kind of push mine through there if it's a big fat ribbon that I can't get through. But I'm just going to create a hanger with that ribbon. I always cut it on a little bit of an angle and then wrap that around my skewer and poke it through. It works every time. And all we're going to do then is on the back, tie some knots so it doesn't pull back through. And that's it, this project is almost done. I lied, we're gonna take some chocolate bar and do a little bit more distressing because I thought it needed some more. And I just went over the vinyl lettering and the little e eggs and the bunny and all of it. So, and I like the way that this turned out. I hope you guys do too. I'm not sure if you guys know, but I'm giving away a $25 Dollar Tree gift card. I'll leave the link below to the video where you can go enter. So go enter today. Good luck. And now up to project number three. This is my favorite of the four. I love it and it was so simple. Anybody can do this. I promise you it is so, so easy. We are going to start by taking this Easter greeting sign from the Dollar Tree. I'm taking three of those and taking the little corrugated metal bunny off of the sign. I love those. I said that in my last haul. I'll link that below. I wanted to use them in something and this was perfect. Then I just had this frame that I had taken the glass out of and that I use as an interchangeable frame for the different holiday signs. And I'm just going to take the piece of foam board that I used out of that. And I'm going to trace that onto another piece of foam board that we're gonna use for our sign. And then we're just gonna cut that out with an X-Acto knife. It's super easy. You do wanna to try to make sure that you get the lines as straight as possible because an X-Acto knife is not, it kinda of always leaves a jagged edge, so just be careful. And then I'm gonna take that frame and show you upside down because like I said, this is a new setup and it's a mess, but you can at least see what I'm doing, so that's all that matters. We're gonna take Waverly chalk paint in the color Elephant and I'm going to cover that frame all over and on the sides. And if you don't have a frame that you can use for this, you can use some five gallon paint sticks for sure and make a stain and put it onto, directly onto the foam board. You can also use some big jumbo craft sticks to do the same thing. Once I have that cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and mark two inches each. It, it measured eight inches. So I'm going to do two inch increments and then I'm going to take my pencil and really I'm just looking to score a little bit of a line, not so much mark because then I'm going to paint. But the paint I'm using is Apple Barrel White 
and Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Ivory. I'm just mixing those together and I'm giving it one coat all over the foam board. And once that has dried, I'm going to go ahead and take, this is just a five gallon paint stick and a small craft stick. And I am going to score even more of those lines that I scored before with the pencil. We're just making it look like wooden planks. I showed you how to do that also on my foam board home sign. And I'll link that above if you want to see a more detailed explanation of how I did that. But it's super easy. It gives separation. It definitely looks like um, wooden boards. So I like the way that it turned out. I like to use this method. And then I'm just going to take some Waverly chalk paint in the color Elephant and the rest of the paint that I used to paint the base here and just a small paintbrush. And I'm going to go right in that groove and fill it in. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. It doesn't have to be perfectly solid color all the way through. I am going to go back and put some more of that paint color that I used to do the base all over everything to kind of mute out those lines a little bit. If you wanted to use a Sharpie here, you definitely could. If you wanted to use any black marker, that would work. And that's what you should have at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little distressing onto my frame. And I just used some Apple Barrel White and Apple Barrel Chocolate Bar to do that, I didn't use a real heavy hand. I definitely wanted to see the distressing, but I didn't want it to be just completely covered like the original black one was. So I would just very lightly went ahead and distress the whole thing. You don't have to do this at all. You can skip that all together. And then one of my bows was actually upside down. So I had to fix that. And I just left the original bows. If you have some really pretty ribbon you wanna use, you can definitely do that. I thought the natural ones were cute, so I, I just used those. And then I'm just gonna take some, three white pom-poms and some hot glue and glue that right on the bunny tail. I think it gives it a little bit of something. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and take those two paint colors again. That was the Waverly Ivory and Apple Barrel White. And just very lightly go ahead and go over those black lines just to kind of mute them out a little bit so they're not so stark. And at this point, I am just going to put that piece of foam board down into my frame. Like I said, I did take the glass out of this. It made things a little bit easier. I'm just going to attach the frame or the, <laughs> the foam board inside of my frame. And then that's what we should have at this point. And then we're just going to go ahead and take some hot glue and glue our little bunnies on. You can glue them any kind of way you want here. I just wanted to do three of them and I just did them side by side. And then I noticed that the left hand side was kind of, you know, there was a big gap right there. So then I went ahead and took some of this white um, and burlap polka dot ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I just made a very simple bow. I will link above the original video where I made the bow that has the original video whose tutorial I followed. She explains it so easily but basically you are just gluing the ends of two of the ribbons together, putting one on top of the other, scrunching them up in the middle. I don't know what word that would be. You'll see what I'm doing here in a second. And then I'm just going to take a piece of um, chenille stem or pipe cleaner and twist that around. I do cannot find my white ones, so it bothers me every time I use one of these dark pink ones. <laughs> and then we're going to take the other piece and scrunch it in the middle. It's going to be our tail, and we're going to attach that to the bow. Super easy. And then I always cut off the excess. And then I go ahead and cut the ends of my bow just like that and then I take a piece of the end that I just cut off and I go ahead and glue it right around the middle to cover that pipe cleaner because it's a really bright pink and we don't want to see that 
And once we have that done, all we have to do is fluff up our bow, just like that. And add a little bit of hot glue and attach it. And that's as hard as it is. This was my favorite of the four. I love this one so much. I hope you guys do too. And our fourth project, if you watched my last haul, I'll link it above. I told you I was going to make an old fashioned scale. This is the first video I filmed with my new camera set up. It is a really, really hot mess, but that's okay. I needed a square plate. My store didn't have any, so I used some square party plates and I just glued several of them together with the spray glue from the Dollar Tree. I'll link above the video where I show you which one that is. I'm going to take some Waverly chalk paint in the color pool and Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory. I'm going to mix those together to get a really pretty muted, almost teal blue color. And it does not really translate on video that well. The end proc, the end color is absolutely amazing. You just can't see that as well in the video, which is kind of sad because the color is absolutely beautiful. So. We're just going to go ahead and give one good coat to our planter. And then I am using this little table from the Dollar Tree doll furniture. But up here in the corner is the kind of table that I was looking for and couldn't find. It's the wooden one. So, and I linked below the exact table on the Dollar Tree website. So if you can find that, that's what I would use. This one's a little bit too small. We made it work, but I would have preferred to have the wooden table. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing with this table. I'm going to give it one good coat of paint, and then I'm going to paint my party plates. And I, again, I did this because they could not find a plastic or glass square plate at my Dollar Tree. That's the only reason I did this. It ended up working out perfectly. The end product looks amazing. And I hope that really translates on video because it really did look great. So we're just gonna give everything one coat of paint. This is one of the planter, um, what are they called? The planter, the bottom of the planter, the thing that it sits on, the planter tray. And we're just going, and I got an eight inch, mine was too big. I would, ex I would advise getting a six inch. I have really messed this whole video up. I have messed up the audio. I have messed up the visual. I do apologize. I love the, the, the project, so I hope you guys do too. This video is a hot mess and this audio is even worse, so I apologize for that, guys. And you know, this wouldn't be a doing a DIY project if I didn't distress it, so I'm gonna go ahead and take some Apple Barrel chocolate bar, some Waverly chalk paint in the color Elephant, and I also believe some Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory and I'm going to just dry brush each one of the pieces that we painted with that really pretty glue. And then I have this old scale clock face that I just printed from an HGTV video or DIY I believe. I linked that down below so you can use the exact same one if you want. It looks really weathered, really old. I was digging the vibe, so that's what I used. I just go ahead and cut that out. And then I'm going to use some Mod Podge to connect it to my plastic planter base or planter tray. I'm not sure what you call this, but like I said, I used an eight inch planter tray. I would suggest a six inch. It would have fit the clock face perfectly and would have, as far as dimensions, made much more sense and looked much better in the final product, but this, had taken so long to do at this point that I didn't want to go back and try to find a six inch. I just went with what I had. And because it was a little too big, I had to use some tumbling tower blocks to build a base, but you'll see that in a second. So we're just going to take that Mod Podge and go over the front. In hindsight, I wish I hadn't done this either because it was a little too thick and it kind of, you know, muted out the color of the clock face a little bit. And then when I go ahead and connect all of these things together, I'm using a combination of E6000 and some hot glue. And I try to start by connecting these with the table top 
on top of the planter. And this ended up being really hard to attach the table, or the, not the table, the um, plates to the top. So you'll see here in a second that I'm going to go back and add a base with some tumbling tower blocks. And I'm actually going to flip the table around the other way. So do as I say, not as I do right here. I'm not sure why this got kept in the final edit, but huh, you got to go with what you got. So you can see that I added a little bit of a base with those tumbling tower blocks. I just painted them blue and then I put the table like so. And then it was so much easier to put those plates up on top of that table without trying to do some Jenga crazy craziness. And you're going to see here in a minute that I forgot or lost the footage of me putting the scale face on, but I attached that with some hot glue in E6000 as well. And the final product looks amazing. I used some peach clips that I got for Walmart. They were 98 cents to give it a little bit of color and it looks phenomenal. I love this so much. I hope you guys did too. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give me a big thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, I hope that you'll do that. And don't forget to go to enter our $25 Dollar Tree gift card giveaway. Until next time, you guys. Bye-bye.